Welcome to TL Yarncrafts TV. I'm Tony, your host, and today we'll be making the Simple Tunisian Ear Warmer. Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of TL Yarncrafts TV. Thanks so much for joining me. If you are clicking over from the Absolute Beginner's Guide to Tunisian Crochet, welcome. If you just happen to stumble upon this tutorial, thanks so much for visiting. I'm Tony, your host of course, and today we're going to be making this super cute, super simple Tunisian ear warmer. I created this pattern as kind of like a first pattern as soon as you learn Tunisian crochet. It uses simple stitches, but it's completely practical, really warm, and um, just a sweet little project. So let's go ahead and get started. So for our supplies, we're going to need a crochet hook. I just used a regular six and a half millimeter crochet hook. You don't need a Tunisian hook for this. Our project is short enough that we can get away with what we have here. You also need a pair of snips, some scissors, whatever you prefer, a yarn needle, and you'll need about 80 yards of worsted weight yarn. I'm using Vanish Choice in this dusty purple color, and let's go ahead and get started. If you haven't done Tunisian crochet before, I strongly encourage you to click the link that's in um, my notes below and visit the Absolute Beginner's Guide to Tunisian Crochet. That'll give you a lot of the basics. I'll go through some of them today, but I'm going to be moving a little bit quicker um, just because I'm assuming you already kind of know what you're doing. So to start, we are going to make a slip knot out of our yarn. However you prefer to make your slip knots, go ahead and do that. We'll put in our hook and tighten that slip knot. So to start this project, we are going to chain 17. All right, we've got our 17 chains. Now, of course, for Tunisian crochet, instead of working in the top loops of our chain, we're going to rotate our chain and work in the back hump. We're going to skip the first hump and move directly into the second one and pull up loops all the way to the end. So by the end of our chain, we should have 17 loops on our hook. Let's do a quick count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Perfect. So to do our return pass of our foundation row, we're going to chain one. So yarn over, pull through one loop. And then we are going to pull through two loops all the way back. So you'll yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. All the way back to where you'll only have one loop on your hook. Perfect. So that completes our foundation row. As you can see, we have 17 live stitches here. So this project calls for the Tunisian simple stitch. Um, that is kind of I kind of compare that to your single crochet. It's kind of the first thing that you learn. It's the simplest stitch. I think it's really, really pretty and um, it's super versatile. So I'll do a couple rows of the Tunisian simple stitch and then um, we'll continue our pattern. So you're going to go into the vertical bar here. This loop on our hook counts as our first stitch. So we will not work into this first vertical bar ever. Um, we will go into the second vertical bar and pull up a loop. And we'll do that all the way down the project. Pull up a loop in all of your vertical bars. By the time you get to the end of this, you should still have 17. And I'll kind of walk through getting through some of those trickier loops at the end of your row. So your last loop is here. Sometimes it can be a little hard to see, but there it is. Well, your second to last loop, rather. My apologies. And then your very last loop is the one that's really hard to see. You're going to take the end of your work and kind of rotate it towards you, and you'll see these two loops here on the end. 
those are the two that you'll want to work under. This is the only time in Tunisian Simple Stitch that you're going to work under two loops. So I've got them both on my hook here. We're going to yarn over and pull up that loop. So that ends your forward pass on your first kind of normal row of your project. And now to complete your return pass, you're going to yarn over, chain one, so pull through one loop, yarn over and pull through two all the way back to the beginning. Fantastic. So we've created our first row of Tunisian Simple Stitch. Um, you can see that the row below is now closed and our live stitches are here at the top. These are the ones that we just completed. So this pattern calls for doing 55 rows of Tunisian Simple Stitch. That includes your foundation. So we are going to do that. I'll do a couple more rows with you and then I'm going to go off camera, uh, grab a cup of coffee and watch some stand-up comedy and finish mine. But we'll do the next few together. <laughs> so we're pulling up loops in all of our vertical bars all the way to the end. Here's our second to last stitch. For our last one, we'll rotate the project towards us. We've got two vertical bars here at the top, this one and that one. We're going to work under those. It can be a little tricky, so take your time. Yarning over and pull up a loop. We're going to yarn over and pull through one and pull through two all the way down our return pass. Pulling through two all the way back till we only have one loop on our hook. All right, that is our third row. Let's do one more together. So again, the loop on your hook counts as one stitch already, so we're not working into this first vertical bar. We're going to work into the second vertical bar in each one down. So going in and pull up a loop all the way down your project. You'll notice already that your project is wanting to curl on you. Um, that's just something that Tunisian Crochet does. If you want some more information on why that happens, go back and watch my Absolute Beginner's Guide to Tunisian Crochet. I kind of talk about why that happens and some things you can do to fix it. Uh, but right now, and especially with this project, we really don't have to worry about it. Um, once we get to the end, I'll talk to you about how we will deal with the curl, or more so ignore it, and continue with our project. So I just finished my return pass, I did my chain, I mean my forward pass, did my chain, and now I'm completing my return pass. And of course, go at the pace that's easiest for you. If you're brand new to crochet, I would definitely start with the Absolute Beginner's Guide, but if you're comfortable with it already, this shouldn't be too much of a problem for you. So now we have four rows of Tunisian crochet complete. We've got our foundation, which was down here, one, two, and three more. So I'm going to leave you for now. Um, come back once you've finished all 55 rows, including your foundation, and we will continue with the project. So welcome back. Um, you should have, at this point, completed all 55 of your Tunisia rows. If you have any questions on how to kind of count those rows, you can either count them on the front, the um, the row that you have on your hook counts as one, um, as well as each kind of set each vertical bar down. I find that counting the vertical bars is the easiest way to count your rows. You can also count um, by looking at the V's on the end. Each V on the end counts as a row as well. So I am just about to complete the return pass on my last row of the project. So I've already done my chain one and now I'm just pulling through two to complete my 55th row. And I bet that didn't even take you very long. So I'm glad to see you back so quickly. You're the best. All right, we've pulled through two. We've got one loop on our hook. So now, of course, we have to bind off. We're going to do a slip stitch bind off, which I cover in the Absolute Basics of Tunisian Crochet. But basically, you're again skipping that first vertical bar, going under the next one, yarn over, and pull through both loops on your hook. And you're going to do that for each stitch all the way to the end. Under the vertical bar, yarn over, pull through two, under, yarn over, pull through two. And that is going to close out those top loops. It's going to finish off your project, give you a nice neat edge. 
Oops. <laughs> Got a little overzealous there. There I go again. All right. Under the vertical bars, yarn over, go pull through two. Under the bar, yarn over, pull through two. We're going to do that for each stitch, like I said. Second to last is here. The very last one, rotating our work, looking for those two vertical bars, working under both of those, yarning over, and pulling through both loops on that hook. All right, so now we're going to leave a nice long tail. Um, I just kind of eyeball it, but this feels good. We're going to snip that, and we're going to pull up this loop. Pull it all the way up and out of your project. Nice and long. All right, we're done with the crochet hook for this project. Now we're going to need our yarn needle. We're going to weave this onto our yarn needle. And turning our project so the wrong sides are facing, we're actually going to whip stitch this closed. So like you can see here, our project is curling at the top and at the bottom. That's just something that Tunisian crochet does. You'll just have to get over it. Um, <laughs> but with this project, since we're going to be sealing up um, our ends, we actually won't have to worry about the curl. So you're just going to whip stitch this closed. So we're going to go under both loops of this first stitch, both loops of the last stitch of our foundation row. And we're going to pull through, pull all the way through, and close that. Moving on to the next stitch under both loops here and both loops here. And you'll see why we left such a long tail. It's for a reason. Don't try to shortcut this part. You're going to need this long, long tail. So you're going to keep doing this all the way to the end. Of course, you're going to do it 17 times because we had 17 stitches. Alrighty, we're at our very last stitch going under both loops on both sides. I like to kind of wrap my yarn this way to kind of create a knot there at the end. Then I don't have to worry about it later. I'm going to drop my loop out of my yarn needle here and I'm going to weave in this end. This can kind of go wherever. I will usually just kind of pick up a few of these bumps on the back of the project and weave that side in. I'll go in one direction and then the other direction. And that'll be pretty secure. And we'll snip it. All right, we're going to put our long tail back on our yarn needle. And what you'll see here is this is our whip stitched edge. What we're going to do is we are actually going to pick up the loops of that whip stitch starting on this side going all the way to the other end. The reason we're going to do that is we're going to then cinch the ear warmer closed and create kind of this front piece here. So the way that we'll do that and slowly, just kind of with some focus, pick up all those whip stitched stitches here with your yarn needle. Pull it through, give yourself some lag here, and keep going. Pulling up all of those loops from your whip stitch all the way to the other end of your project. Okay. Now you can drop your yarn needle, leave it in whatever you prefer. We're going to pull this tail all the way through. Flip our project back right side out. And let's do a magic trick. We're going to cinch this closed. Okay? So you've got a nice little cinch there, and that's exactly what I did on this project. So what I like to do at this point is I'm going to put my yarn needle back on, back on my yarn. Cinch this close as tight as I like it. I'm going to create a little knot here so I don't have to keep cinching it each time. That's just personal preference, whatever you prefer to do. Now, I'm going to drop my yarn needle again 
and we're going to take our long tail kind of hold this closed and we're going to start wrapping our yarn multiple times that's exactly what happened here we wrap our yarn to give us a nice finished front so underneath this wrapping is our seam so our finished piece is completely seamless so wrap it as many times as you like like I said you've got a nice long tail so take your time make it neat and get to wrapping feels good to me it's nice and well wrapped kind of flatten it out a little bit you can already kind of see how that will turn out so again thread your yarn needle and we're going to work on the underside of the knot and just kind of weave it through a few times to lock it make sure it's in there nice and tight because this we do not, of course, want to come out. Okay. That should be good. Grab those snips. One last cut. And there you have it. Your super simple Tunisian ear warmer. You can make this, of course, out of any yarn, any weight. Um, if you have longer needles, you can make a longer project something a little bit taller but that's perfect um thanks for sticking around with me throughout that full project you have now completed your first tunisian crochet project and i'm super proud of you um, make sure you check me out on my social media at to yarn crafts on instagram and facebook and also drop by the blog thanks so much for joining me on to yarn crafts tv i appreciate you and i'll see you next time Hi, I'm Tony Lipsy of TL. Ugh. Hi, welcome. Welcome to TL Yarn Crafts.